I'm Connor and welcome to my channel The Closet. If it's your first time here on my channel, I like to talk about all things luxury. So if that's something you're into, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're notified when I bring out new videos. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a tag video and I was tagged by the creator Meredith from Living Lux with Meredith who is my fan friend and I will definitely link her channel and the original video down below. Um, but Meredith created this tag and I think it, it is a fantastic tag. I love um, kind of videos that are outside of the general Lux contents every net contents context whatever, every now and then. And I think it's a great way that people that watch our channels, whether it's their first time watching a video or they've been watching for ages, can find out a little bit more about us. So good job, Meredith, hats off to you for this one. And I will be tagging some people in this video as well, and they will all be tagged in the description box. But basically the premise of this tag is called, um, <laughs> I remembered it and then I fucking forgot, wait inside the YouTube studio. So it's, um, watch Meredith's video cause she explains it better than I can. <laughs> but I watched Meredith's video um, and she sent me the questions the day before. And then I answered all the questions on my phone. And then when I was watching Meredith's video just before, I was like, Meredith, all our, all our answers are the same. <laughs> so I don't know if it's like a Pisces thing cause Meredith and I like two days apart now, birthday. Um, or we're both just like great minds think alike, <laughs> but let's get right into it. So the first question is which designers slash design house have made the greatest impact on your fashion choices and purchases? Um, definitely Louis Vuitton. Um, I think out of all the fashion houses out there, Louis Vuitton are the one that always grabs my eye. And even if there will be a collection or a season that comes out, that's not for me. I know that they, it's going to be followed by one that will be for me. Um, I think that they're always pushing, I think they're always pushing the boundaries and they're, um, quite creative with a lot of their pieces. And I love to see what they come out with. Um, collections that ring to mind is definitely the Chapman Brothers collection that came out, I think in 2017. I loved that. I I thought it was kind of dark and gothic and then playful at the same time. And I like the color scheme that a lot of the pieces came out in highly collectible. A lot of the pieces are incredibly coveted and rare. And, um, if you do have a piece from that collection, hold on to it. Um, and secondly, the multicolor collection that is just like epic. I think of, um, Jessica Simpson, if you've seen newlyweds, like from years and years ago, back when like reality TV was quite new, she like was trying to purchase all of the multicolor pieces and it was just like peak two thousands. And I just, when I think of that, I think of just like aspirational. Like I was like, Oh my God, I need to know more about this. And I just absolutely love it. So definitely Louis Vuitton for the brands. What turns you on creatively? And I have answered with innovation and twists. I like brands that push beyond the boundaries, but without being too out there where it's just like, okay, what's going on? Um, I like, uh, what's the word? Like I like takes on classic pieces in a modern kind of way. I think it's really, it, it's just what speaks to me. I like seeing like, mm, I see what you did there. And yeah, twists like, for example, like I mentioned before with Louis Vuitton, they'll have their classic monogram print, but then they'll change the color scheme or they will reverse image it or whatever. I love that. And I think it stays true to the brand while being innovative, innovative. In oh God. <laughs> and what turns you off? Definitely cash grabs. I don't like where a collection comes out and it's clearly trying to play on a current trend just to get the cash grab. Um, I, an example of this would be with Fendi's latest collection or their upcoming collection, I should say from their, their fashion show that we've just seen and the Sarah Jessica Parker collection. Um, Dale and Meredith did a great review on this um, runway and I will definitely link it down below. Um, but I feel like the Sarah Jessica Parker um, collab I mean, it was like an ombre baguette with sequins, groundbreaking. And I just feel like I, I don't see the connection between her and Fendi where that bag is so significant to represent it. So that would be an example of something I would consider a cash grab and not all about it. Who or what inspires you in your everyday life? Um, I would have to say that probably my family does. Um, my mum, I think is an incredible example for myself as someone that is inspirational. Um, she is someone that has worked incredibly hard. She comes from a generation where if you wanted to go to university to educate yourself further after school, you had to pay it upfront. 
um, and there were limited kind of spots for degrees and you've got to be in a position where you're so dedicated and motivated to go and study um, and that's always kind of been instilled in me. I really, I, I have a high regard for education, more so for the application it takes to do that um, and she's definitely somebody that I find who is incredibly optimistic. She is very, um, she will find the good in everyone and she will always have a very well-rounded view on um, issues and society as a whole and she's definitely somebody that I go to when I need clarification on something or if I want to educate myself better or have a, a perspective that I know that I currently don't have. It might be quite um, you know, I might be quite grounded in my opinion and once I have a conversation with her, she gives me a totally different perspective and I really love that about her and I love that I do get a bit of the softness from that as well and um, yes. Um, also, um, my brothers, I've got two older brothers and they are both, honestly, all three of us are totally different in personality but when I think of my own personal identity, I think of myself as one of three in a good way um, and my brothers are definitely parts of me that I wish I had and I know that there's parts of me that I know that they wish they had um, and I take a lot from them and especially my middle brother Shannon, he is such a, honestly if you met the two of us you'd be like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> They're like chalk and cheese, but he is such a kind-hearted person. He is someone that sees the best in everyone. He gives everyone a chance. Um, he works in education and he basically works with children who have severe behavioral issues but are in um, uh, that are in higher education, like year 11 and 12. And that is something that I personally could not do. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of... Um, resilience as a person to do something like that and I always find that with both of my brothers I will find parts of them that I wish I had that I can learn from because I don't have those parts and they do teach me to be a better person so definitely um, my family I'm very grateful. What traits or attributes attract you to other people? Um, definitely a sense of humor. I highly regard a sense of humor in somebody and also the ability to be able to laugh at yourself, be self-deprecating as well. I find that a very secure person can do that. Um, and also stability. I like people who I know that they're grounded. I know that they've got their shit sorted out and they've got a path and they're following. I've never been attracted to people who are kind of just all over the place and kind of, oh yeah, go with the flow and kind of get through life like that. I do not relate to that whatsoever. <laughs> I don't connect with people like that. I find it very, it makes me very uneasy and I just don't feel like I've got a lot of a lot in common with people like that. Sometimes I wish I could be a little bit like that, but overall, yeah, no, nah, definitely not. What traits or attributes turn you off other people? And I have put lack of self-awareness. I find people who will kind of deny key attributes that they have because they don't like that in themselves when it is literally the accurate depiction of themselves. I find that big turn off. You've got to be able to take accountability. You've got to be able to know your strengths and your weaknesses and how you kind of operate as a person because you're never going to be, you know, a person that people want to be around if you, if you can't do that. And I've also put emotional maturity. Um, whilst I am quite humorous and I do, you know, love to find the human everything, I find myself to be quite emotionally mature. I pick up on what people's needs are and I would want that reciprocated with other people. I'd want them to kind of read between the lines, be emotionally mature, know what the cues are, know when somebody needs something, know when to back off. And I think that not everybody can learn or has emotional maturity, but I am definitely um, drawn to people that do have that. Five adjectives that describe you. So I've put grounded, humorous, honest, loyal, and consistent. I find myself to be very grounded. I always have a direction that I'm going um, and I like to have clear plans in place for my life. It doesn't always have to be like, you know, in this year, this is what you're doing, but overall I do have a kind of path that I like to follow. Humorous, obviously I'm quite humorous. I like to find the humor in everything. I'm that person that doesn't want a funeral. I really want it to be a party. I don't like Debbie Downer moments. I always will find the humor in things, even if it's terrible, I will try and find the humor in something because I think laughter really does make a big difference. And it's, um, it's almost like my version of optimism.
And then I've put um, honest. I'm incredibly honest. I like to be very direct with people. I like people to know how I feel about things when asked. And I like to always know that I would rather somebody be disappointed with my honesty than satisfied with me not being 100% honest. Um, I always speak what's on my mind and I'm definitely not somebody that likes to like bottle up emotions. I don't think that is self-serving for anyone. And I feel like you you're generally always going to be better off being honest with someone than to tell a half truth or suppress it. Uh, then I've also put loyal, very similar to Meredith. I'm definitely somebody that is very loyal. I'm very protective of the people that I like. Um, I will always stand up for people that are close to me and I will definitely, you know, <laughs> I will definitely um, be, you know, you know what I'm thinking if you piss someone off that I like. Um, and I, I don't have a huge circle of friends that I would do that for. It's a very limited circle, but it's a lot easier to be loyal for three or four people than it is a lot of people. <laughs> so definitely loyal. And then I, my last one is consistent. I'm, I like consistency with people. I like consistency with how they operate, how they do things, their opinions on stuff. I find it a very safe feeling when somebody is consistent and I think that it's very telling of who they are as a person if you notice that they remain the same, especially over a long period of time. What is your favorite word? I put subjective. I feel like subjective is the, it's the inner lawyer in me, but it is the best word to put out because it kind of covers your ass. <laughs> you can always say X, Y, and Z, but that's subjective. It's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I like that word. Least favorite word. I, <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that hates this word. I put moist. <laughs> it's so gross. I don't know what it is. I don't even know if it's the connotation. There's something about it. I'm like, oh, when I hear it. So yeah, no, I don't even want to say it again. What sound or noise do you love? I love... Oh, so I like a lot of the ASMR videos, especially the bag cleaning ones. And the reason for that is when they do the spray, the kss, kss, oh, I love the spray, uh, the sound of the spray. Oh, so good. And I equally love the smell of Windex. So when someone's spraying on the windows and you can smell the Windex, I'm like, oh, heaven. I know, right? Weird. <clears throat> and what sound or noise do you hate? I hate motorbikes like that. I hate that noise. And I also hate when somebody drops cutlery and it like hits the plate or hits the table. I don't know. I don't know why it just irks me. Like if I hear that happen, even if I do it to myself, I'm like, Oh, I don't even know why. It's just one of those things. I can't explain it. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, I always, in my kind of own self wanted to do like litigation law. I think that I would be good at it, but I don't think I have the application or the patience to go back and do it. And even when I was at uni originally, um, when I was doing my business degree, I didn't think that I would have been able to finish a law degree at that age. I went to uni when I was like 17 and I finished. And um, I think at that age I was a bit immature and I didn't really have enough kind of travels under my belt with the real world to grasp what it actually undertook to do that. I think if I had to go back now and do law, I could, and I would definitely finish it. But I've spoken to a lot of lawyers they're not happy people. <laughs> so yes, um, if I was to do a medical profession, which would be very difficult, I would probably do dentistry. That's the only medical professional profession that I would like to do. So yes, but I'm happy with what I do now five people dead or alive that you would like to have dinner with. So I put Princess Diana, icon, fabulous. Like I would love to have met Princess Di and to go out for dinner with her would be absolutely epic. I put Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. I love a lot of her music. Um, I find that she's such an icon as well and she would definitely be someone that I'd like to have dinner with. Um, I put Julia Louis-Dreyfus from, um, she was in Seinfeld, she played Elaine in Seinfeld. I absolutely love her. I think she is hilarious. And one of my favorite videos that I love to watch on YouTube is her um, winning the, what's it called? Mark Twain Award for her commitment to the arts. I will link that video down below as well. It is hilarious. I always watch it and it is just such a accurate depiction of what she is like. I've also put Oprah because Oprah is absolute boss. I would, you'd have like a whole 
five hour conversation with her about something. I feel like she has um, so much to contribute to conversation and she brings a lot to the table, pun intended, and definitely somebody that has been on my want to go out for dinner list for a very long time. And then fifth, I put Drew Barrymore. I love Drew Barrymore. I watch her talk show on YouTube all of the time. I feel like she has so many layers to her. And if you go and watch her talk shows, they're very emotional, <laughs> but um, I, I thoroughly enjoy um, her videos and also her movies. Hello, Never Been Kissed, top five movies. Uh, two celebrity hall passes. I don't need any hall passes because I'm single, so I can do what I want. Three celebrities you would love to have a drink at the pub with. Okay, so I put Robbie Williams because, guys, Robbie Williams, he would be like the party. Like, whatever he's going to do, I'm following, all right? Um, Jennifer Lawrence, same as Meredith because she is also hilarious. I feel like, especially after she's had a few little cheeky drinks, she'd be even funnier. And then I've also put Michelle Obama. Now, I would have had her at the dinner table because you could equally have had dinner with Michelle as gone out to drinks with. But I reckon at the pub, she would just be like, Let's go. And I think she's amazing, stunning, intelligent. And um, if she brings Barack as well, that would be even better. And then it would be like a full on party, but just love Michelle Obama. You're spending the next 12 months on a desert island and it can only take one book, one movie, one TV series, one album. Um, why, am I, <laughs> why am I going there, Meredith? <laughs> um, okay, so. For the book, I would like to take an up-to-date encyclopedia. Remember like the Britannica encyclopedia days when like that was the source of information you had? If they had like an updated version that could self-update, I would freaking read that all day long. I love to read about history. I love to read about anything and everything. And I would get a lot of, um, a lot of satisfaction out of that book. Um, one TV series, I put Sex in the City. And if I can't take second Sex in the City, I've taken One Tree Hill. That's my other favorite TV show. Both have like lots of seasons, so then I can keep like I'll be hopefully can space them out throughout the year. Um, and one album I have put um, uh, The Sound of White by Missy Higgins. That is uh, that was like one of the first albums that I had got when I was younger, where I really found like the person who was singing the songs was also writing about their emotions and what, you know, has really moved them. And that album, um, is an incredible, um, you know, what's the word? An incredible, like depiction of that. Like if you don't know Missy Higgins, she's an Australian singer songwriter. She's incredible. Um, and that, the album sounded white, honestly, like blew me away. And I really started to connect with music then from that album. And what are you taking to the island? Um, good food and moisturizer because I don't want to be looking like a crocodilio at the end of it. <laughs> and then the last question, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, I would like to hear him say, thank you for keeping me entertained. And I'd say you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video guys and listening to all my answers to the questions. Thank you Meredith for starting this tag. Fabulous, like yourself and I really enjoy these kinds of videos. I like the originality um, of coming up with the idea for YouTube as well. Good job, big ticks. And yeah, I'm gonna tag a few people like I said before in the description box. I hope that you will um, contribute and do your part of it as well. Um, and yeah, go and check out Meredith's channel as well. She's absolutely fabulous. Queen of, queen of the unboxing where I'm gifting her that title so beep. and um, yes yeah, so thanks so much for watching please like and subscribe to my channel hop onto Instagram and follow me there the closet by Connor underscore as well and hope to all see you in my next video